Hello, this is Mr. Beck. This is part three in my series on working with a bitmap inside of Android. This is designed for my eighth grade programming class. In part two, we learn to rotate the bitmap based on the condition of the left and right buttons. If it's being held down, we're rotating. And if the button is being released, we're doing nothing. By the time we finish with this video, we're going to change this middle button. And I went ahead and I just changed it from fire to thrusters. Uh, when you press the middle button, you'll be able to send the rocket off in the direction that it's pointed. Now, the longer you hold down the thrusters button, the faster it'll go. And when you release the button, it will slow down and eventually come to a stop. So that's where we're headed. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, up at the very top of the class, I've rearranged a couple of things. Uh, first of all, the value rotation in the initial program is an integer. And I'm changing that to a float now because we're going to need it to be more precise. So you want to change that to a float. That's going to be fine for this. Um, position X and position Y are kind of important. They are declared in part two in the update method. There's a declaration there, and they're both ints. I need you to go into the update method and delete the declaration of position X and position Y because we need to declare them globally now at the top of our class. And we're going to make them floats instead because, again, we need these to be more precise. Okay? So at the top of the class, we're going to have float position X and float position Y. We're going to set those to zero, and you're going to erase the declaration of them inside of the update method. I've added a, a variable, an integer, start, and I'm setting it to zero, and you'll see how we use that in a second. And I've got a float that's called speed here that's going to hold the speed value, how fast our rocket is moving. So it's important uh, that we have all of this set up correctly. You might want to pause and do that. Okay. Right. So let's take a look at onDraw. Now, onDraw is a method that is being you know, called frequently. It's refreshing the screen. Therefore, it's good to use as like you can use it for like game ticks. That's kind of how I like to think about it. Every time there's a screen refresh, it's a game tick. Um, and button three is the center button. So in the event the button three is pressed, we're toggling that getter setter static integer to one. So what we're going to say is in the event that, you know, that integer is toggled to one in the getter setter class, we're going to increase the value of speed by 0.04. Now, it initially starts out with a value of 0. The rocket is sitting still. So after the first screen refresh, it'll be 0 0.04. Second screen refresh, 0 0.08. Third screen refresh, 0 0.12. And so on, as long as you hold it. Um, it will continue to get faster. Now, otherwise, we're saying, go ahead and subtract from the value of speed. So the effect of this is, if the button pressed is 0 or it's in the up position, we're going to subtract from speed. And you can see that I've just chosen to subtract from the value of speed um, at a, a lesser rate than I'm increasing it. So it will slow down more slowly. It's up to you. Um, I also included an if statement here, a condition. I said, you know, if speed is greater than zero, subtract from speed. Because, you know, if you subtract from speed no matter what, at the beginning of the game, speed is zero, right? Well, if it starts off and it's, you know, subtracting from speed, the rocket's going to move backwards, right? And that's not what we want. So we want it to, uh, only in the event that it's greater than zero, do we want to subtract from speed. Other than that, we won't touch it. Okay? Uh, now, this doesn't effectively set speed to zero because this still, you know, speed could still become a negative number. But, um, you know, we could include a statement that says something like, if speed is less than zero, speed equals zero, you know just to make sure that speed maybe becomes zero at some point in case, you know, speed for some reason drops below that zero threshold and the rocket does start going backwards, we can stop it. Something to think about. So anyway, uh, in the onDraw function, go ahead and make sure you've got uh, the logic that inc increments the speed value in the event the button is pushed and uh, decrements it in the event the button is in the up position. Okay. So uh, most of what we're going to do here is going to be inside of our update method. So let's take a look at that. We start with a start integer. Now, at the beginning of the game, start equals zero. And eventually, we may want to build in a reset button. But for right now, we only want to position 
our icon at the center of the screen when the program starts, right? So uh, we're going to check to see if start equals zero. We're going to get the, you know, we talked about this in part two. We are going to get the dimensions of our screen, the dimensions of our bitmap, divide by two, figure out where the center is, and set position and X and position Y to our center values. And then we're going to toggle start to one so that doesn't happen again. So right at the beginning of the game, we're at the center of the screen. Start becomes one. This if statement gets called one time. That's it. Again, later on, we may call this again um, when we do, like, uh, we may build in a little button that says reset or come in, come up with some type of uh, game logic or game mechanic that resets the position of the rocket. And then we can use this later. Now, in the original program, I have a block commented out, and it says, you know, we will uncomment this in lesson three, and that's this set of logic here. What we're doing is we're taking the rotation value of the rocket, essentially, and we're multiplying it by the speed factor, okay, to determine how far it needs to go and in what direction based on X and Y. Um, I pulled this logic from Stack Overflow. Just by Googling, um, you know, I needed to find some logic that would allow me to do just this, you know, move an object in a direction based on rotation, and this works. Um, if you want to read up on the, the trig here and everything, I encourage you to do so. Um, so anyway, we determine the rotation angle, and we make a determination as to what the next x and y coordinate should be based on the speed. So we're taking the position x and the position y where the rocket is currently, and we are adding, okay, a value to that based on this formula. And the upshot is, okay, no matter which way it's rotated, in the next frame, it will move in the correct direction a specific distance. Now, just to kind of think about this a little bit further, let's say at the beginning of the game, speed is zero, which it is, right? Um, it, and let's say the rotation value, it's rotated 20 degrees. Well, it's going to go through and it's going to rotate. Um, it's going to check. It's going to do, you know, the math. It's going to convert degrees to radians. And we're going to pull the information we need. And then it's going to multiply it by speed, which is zero, which is essentially going to set speed x to zero. And again, speed y will also be set to zero because we're multiplying by zero. And then when we take position x and position y, which at the beginning of our game is the center of the screen, and we add zero, what do we get? The same position. And as we increase speed, uh, the distance between you know, where it is now and where it needs to be in the next frame increases. Um, so as that distance increases per screen refresh, we get the impression of the rocket speeding up. Anyway, this is good logic to have. This is a, this is a, a nice little formula here. And, uh, you know, it works. So this is a good one to reference, I think. All right. So anyway, oh, I did one more thing. Once you've uncommented that block. Down here at the very bottom of our update method, you know, I thought about it. And if the person, you know, you got to think about what your end user is going to do. And that, that can be really, really difficult. If the end user holds down the button, making it go to the right for a minute, well, eventually we're going to get a greater value for not even le you know less than that. We're going to get a value that's greater than 360. And realistically, we're, we want the rotation value to, you know, to keep everything sane. We want to keep it within a 360 degree um, range. So, you know, I went ahead and I, th I thought, okay, well, if rotation equals 360, let's, let's reset it. And if rotation equals negative 360, let's go ahead and reset it. That way we know that the rotation number there will always be somewhere between zero, or excuse me, negative 360 and 360. So an if statement like that, keeping our rotation value inside of that 360 degree range, it makes sense. And, you know, because rotation is a float, 
we may want to go ahead and cover our bases by saying, you know, if it's greater than 360, make it zero. And this will, this will maybe give us some strange results, but it's something to think about. And I'll say if it's less than 360, make it zero because our rotation is a float. Uh, therefore, there's no guarantee that it will equal 360 exactly. You know, it may equal 360.4, right? And in that event, I'm going to say, okay, go ahead and set it back to zero. Or if it equals negative 360.265, well, go ahead and just call it zero. You know, and that way we can kind of keep things in that range. Okay, so once you've gone through and you've put your variables up here globally, you've set your speed logic inside of on draw, checking for that button press, and we've uncommented our directional logic here. You're ready to roll, and when you run the program, you should have those thrusters working. So that's it for part three. Thank you for watching, and uh, we will continue to build on this particular application as we move forward. Thank you.